Hello there, this is your host Osinian with yet another edition of your favorite transportation program on television. On the Lagos transportation agenda, we highlight topical issues as well as current and emerging trends and events in the dynamic world of transportation. We are coming to you from the Radisson Hotel, Ikeja, Lagos, where the maiden edition of the Nigerian Automotive Industry Summit was held. The summit is a joint collaboration between the Nigerian Auto Journalists Association, NAJA, and the National Automotive Design and Development Council, or NAWDC. Great economies are built on good transportation network. This is why Lagos State Government through LAMATA has been working tirelessly to enhance the state's transport infrastructure and implement the Strategic Transport Master Plan, STMP, for Lagos and create a world-class transport network for the metropolis. The STMP would deliver six rail lines, one monorail, 14 BRT routes, 26 water transport routes, three cable car routes, and several road intervention to promote the inter of the transport modes. When all these projects are completed, there will be lower emission leading to better health for all, lower road crashes, better quality of life, and faster economic growth. With the BRT already running in some corridors, jetties being upgraded and rail line from Okokomaiko to CMS coming on board soon. Life of Logosians in the face of Lagos is changing every day. A healthier and more prosperous Lagos is in the making and La Mata is driving it. La Mata, keeping Lagos moving. The summit, whose theme is reviving the Nigerian economy through the automotive industry, was graced by leading stakeholders in the automotive ecosystem, such as the Director General of the NAWDC, Mr. Joseph Osanipi, as well as representatives from the Lagos State Government and other governments around the Federation, the Nigerian Customs Service, and other leading associations in the industry. In his opening remarks of welcome, the chairman of NAJA, Mr. Mike Ochoma, described the summit as a platform to bridge the gap between stakeholders and position Nigeria as a hub for manufacturing in Africa, as well as for the opportunities that are being presented by the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, or AFTA. How's the team reviving Nigeria's automotive industry through the automotive sector? Initiating this summit is vital, especially at this moment in history, when Nigeria is struggling to map out its way out of the prevailing global economic despair. Being one of the drivers of the global economy, the auto industry, if given the necessary impetus in Nigeria, is capable of transforming the country to an automotive manufacturing hub in Africa. To this end, the Nigeria Auto Industry Summit shall annually produce significant information compost that would help the government to make it happen. That is why the maiden event is themed reviving Nigeria's, uh, Nigeria's economy through the automotive sector. Significantly, the summit shall on yearly basis seek to bridge the information and communication gap between the nation's auto industry stakeholders and relevant government agencies annually. The summit shall strive to give a single and united voice for the auto industry leaders to set developmental agenda aimed at kickstarting and driving relevant government policies through a sustainable development of the automotive industry in Nigeria and ultimately ultimately position the country as a frontline beneficiary of the African free trade agreement area. Finally, on behalf of all members of the Nigeria Automotive Association, I employ everyone here attending this summit to relax, be very, 
patients and make meaningful contributions. And most importantly, tell ourselves the truth during this summit as we seek practical solutions that will nurture Nigeria and bring back Nigeria too to the regional, if not into the global automotive map. Together we can. Thank you very much. The Director General of the Nigerian Automotive Design and Development Council, NADDC, Mr. Joseph Osanipi, described the Nigerian automotive industry as a theater of unending opportunities and potentials. However, he lamented that it is hampered by a number of factors, including the refusal of the average Nigerian to appreciate locally made products. I am proud to be part of this great occasion, the Nigerian Automotive Industry Summit. Organized by the NAJA. NAJA is Nigeria Auto Journalist Association. The summit presents a critical platform for us to come together, discuss the current state of Nigeria Auto Industry, and chart a new call for the solution. The Nigerian automotive industry holds immense, immense potential with a growing population and a rising demand for safe, safety reliable and affordable vehicles. The opportunities are vast. However, we also face significant challenges. So as we are, as we gather here, let's start thinking in what way can we start contributing more to the to auto sector as well because indirectly it will now contribute to the economy. The sources of Nigerian automotive industry hinges on collaboration. To that end, we are always ready to work with willing stakeholders. By working hand in hand with you, the private sectors, we want to encourage you that whatever we need to do, come advise or we don't know it all. It should tell you this is what the council is supposed to do. This is what the country is expected. We will look at it and see how we can work together, collaborate together. And also, we are working on ensuring that we promote made in Nigeria goods. I think on March 19th, was it March 19th, sometime in March, they also play pass a resolution that every goods manufacturer in Nigeria is carry the made in Nigeria. Is it that we are not proud of our products? Most of the very good manufacturers in Nigeria don't carry that. What's the issue? <laughs> Why are we afraid to put meat in Nigeria on our products? We went to, to, to component parts. And we saw some popular part manufacturing in Nigeria. He said, This one manufacturing in Nigeria. Why am I? Can't you put made in Nigeria? He said, No. Because you still here, you know, have faith if you see made in Nigeria. But they package it and send it out of the country and bring it back at the Soviet price, and you are willing to buy it. I look at it and it's pain that we have to package our own products and make it look that it belongs to another country before you and I to be proud of buying it. Do we want to be deceived? Let's patronize what we have. And let the confidence enough to put meat in Nigeria in our goods. The REP, in our National Assembly, I say, put it there, we want to see. The president is saying, put it there. They are now telling us, tell your people, put made in Nigeria in your products. Let's be proud of what we produce. The future of Nigeria automotive industry is bright if we all work together. With our plan for continued collaboration, innovation, and commitment to local production 
about an patronage of Nigerian vehicles. Nigeria has the potential to become the vehicle manufacturer of the West Africa and the whole Africa if we are all willing and we want to make it happen. Also speaking, the Minister for Trade, Industry and Investment, Dr. Doris Anite, who was represented at the occasion by Mrs. Olumuiwa Ajayade, expressed her ministry's commitment to leverage on private sector partnership in its bid to position the sector as a key economic driver. This event is timely and essential as we navigate through economic challenges and explore avenues for sustainable growth. Today, I want to focus on a critical aspect of our national development, reviving Nigerian economy through the automobile sector. Because I th the government has realized that the automobile sector is one of the critical sectors that can be leveraged to develop and sustain the economy. The automotive industry has the potential to be a cornerstone of our economic recovery, offering numerous benefits including job creation, technology transfer, and the development of ancillary industries. The role of the automotive industry in economic re revival includes job creation. The automotive industry is a labor intensive, is labor intensive and has the potential to create thousands of jobs across the value chain, from manufacturing and assembly to sales, maintenance and logistics. By fostering a robust automotive sector, we are, can significantly reduce unemployment rates and provide sustainable livelihoods for our citizens. I know many of us remember the, the days of Pan and Volkswagen, and that we know that they were high employers of labor. Apart from the textile industries, I think they were the second largest employer of labor. The National Automotive Industry Development Plan, NAIDP. This plan provides incentives for local manufacturing, including tax breaks, import duty reductions on essential machinery, and investment friendly regulations. It aims to attract both local and foreign investments in vehicle assembly and production. The automotive sector holds the key to reviving Nigeria's economy and positioning our nation as a hub for automotive manufacturing in Africa. With the right policies, investments, and collaborative efforts, we can transform the sector into a significant driver of economic growth and development. I urge all stakeholders, government agencies, and private sector players, financial institutions, and development partners to join hands in this endeavor. Together, we can build a vibrant and sustainable automotive industry that will drive Nigeria's economic revival and ensure a prosperous future for all. Thank you, and I look forward to our continued collaboration and success. Welcome back. If you're just joining, is the Lagos Transportation Agenda. And this is our coverage of the just concluded maiden edition of the Nigerian Automotive Industry Summit in Lagos. 
the summit featured four key presentations by stakeholders in the automotive industry. One of the guest speakers, Mr. Bennett Ejindu, made an opening presentation in which he listed the impacts of a vibrant automotive industry on the economy of any nation to include the following employment generation, gross domestic product or GDP growth, promotion of small and medium enterprises or SMEs, skill and capacity development, as well as technology and innovation. Mr. Ejindu described Nigeria as an auto manufacturer's paradise because the country is blessed with all the factors that make for an automotive industry in one place. It is time, he added, to maximize the full benefits that the auto ecosystem has to offer by doing the following. Auto development plan, use of locally made products, restriction of import of used vehicles or tokumbos, raw materials development, and the necessary fiscal measures that create an enabling environment for the growth of a virile and vibrant Nigerian auto industry. We have the CNG policy, which actually, I mean, the way it works is that what we have, the Igbo people will say that the firewood you have in your place should be enough to cook your food. So we have abundance of natural gas in Nigeria. And actually, the quality there, the quality of our natural gas is among the best in the world. Okay? It is clean such that. I mean, we should be using it instead of flaring it the way we have been flaring since 1956. We should use it to power out our automotives. And it is cleaner than diesel, it is cleaner than petrol. So, wise thing would be for us to do what the government is doing now. But it actually creates an opportunity. That opportunity would be for us to align the, auto, the gas policy with the auto policy. And with that, of course, the auto industry will receive the life that it should have. But it is not properly aligned. Next is the lack of adequate engineering infrastructure. Um, we have abundant deposits of uh, essential raw materials for automotive manufacturing. Iron and steel, aluminum, plastic, elastomers, you know, name them. Even for electric vehicles, electric vehicles, Nigeria has cobalt, Nigeria has lithium, Nigeria has manganese, Nigeria has bauxite, Nigeria has uh, graphite. We have deposits of these things in Nigeria. That's for electric vehicle. As of 2012, annual spending on vehicles import was over 3.5 billion. Now, what are we trying to say? If we make just what Morocco is making today. What we'll be doing is that we'll be concerning about that something million billion dollars only just at the performance level of Morocco today, which is actually 535,000 units of vehicles that they produced. We will have positive impact on our foreign exchange, what we are using to import vehicles into Nigeria. One thing is that if people are discouraged from investing in, a, in an economy, just as they are with regard to Nigeria, you can't expect them to go and invest massively, I mean, invest in projects that cost so massively as punchlines and presses. It is our government that should do it the way China did. We are not saying that government should run a business. All we are saying is that government should work as a catalyst to set up such capacity in Nigeria. And I am sure that the OEMs that are represented here today will agree to patronize such an organization, to buy the uh, car shells, to buy the body shells, to buy the chassis frames, and to buy the other components that that uh, organization can produce. And then, aggressively incentivize CKD as the true contract manufacturing. What we will do is to leverage the capacities already existing in Nigeria because we have plants. In that way, what that one will just mean, like we said in the other time, is that it will be like pressing a reset button 
to our auto, automotive manufacturing capacity to get back to what we were doing in 1980 and continue from there to grow. All our auto, automotive component purchases, more than 65% of them are tires and batteries. Why do we import them? Why did the Shalin leave? So why don't we also adopt something like that versus allowing a lot of brand, a lot of uh, players to produce on numbered number uh, models? And in that way, there is no way you can generate enough volume to support a component manufacturer. But if we have these few models defined as program vehicles, then of course we can generate that scale, that number that will encourage the component manufacturer to start producing the parts. Thank you very much. The fourth guest presentation was by Mr. T.M. Daniel, who represented the Comptroller General of the Nigerian Custom Service. The automotive industry plays a vital role in the Nigerian economy. This cannot be overemphasized. Because from the analysis so far, the industry plays a vital role in the Nigerian economy contributing to transportation, job creation, economic activities across various sectors, which means we want development, we want to open up areas to bring the mongols growth and create roads, transportation. And the key component of that is the very drive those roads. Because that's the only way you connect people. The only way you connect people that bring development. And the auto industry from time immemorial, whether the, through the time we're using horses, donkeys, to whatever. It's so vital in the development of economy of any country. Yeah. So in a bit to support the Nigerian automotive sector, the federal government alongside the Nigerian Custom Service has dedicated tariff headings, chapter 98, to enable manufacturers and assemblers in the automotive industry to bring in completely knockdown, as well as semi knockdown vehicles, parts at a reduced rate of duty. This will help to generate employment and for that ensures that the concerns of those in automotive industry are taken care of. The summit also featured an exhibition of locally made vehicles and components. Some of these vehicles are CNG battery powered uh, vehicles as well as those powered by gas and other non-fossil fuel products. Right here is one of the CNG powered vehicles that were exhibited at the maiden edition of the Nigerian Auto Industry Summit in Lagos with the strides made by local manufacturers and all the revelations that were made at the summit, the lessons that were learned and taken away by participants, the Nigerian automotive industry certainly is headed in the right direction and the future is indeed bright. As a driver for the national economy, as well as a hub for manufacturing in West Africa and a key revenue generator for Nigeria, job creation for our youth, the future is indeed bright. That's the size of our show today. The Lagos Transportation Agenda will return at this time next week on this station for yet another interesting discourse on the future and the projections for the Nigerian uh, transportation system. This is Austin Inyang, your host, hoping you join me then as we explore the dynamic world of transportation. Until then, bye-bye and God bless.